Hello. Hello. Oh. Oh, oh you are smelly. <laughs> this this little cat, she, this very sweet, cantankerous little baby, does nothing but sleep all day, and she stinks. I don't understand it. Like I think she's sleeping right now or trying to. She's usually trying to either eat or sleep, but like she doesn't go outside. She doesn't really play because, you know, she's old. She just pretty much sleeps all day and she stinks. Oh, am I saying mean things about you? Am I making you mad? Yes. Screw you. She's like, be <laughs> she does everything possible to go out of her way <laughs> not to be on the Internet. Yeah. Every fucking time. She's like, she's oh, like, look. I'm in kitty witness protection. You don't even fucking know. I can't have my face all up in the internet and shit. They're gonna find me. I bet no matter where in that room, if you put the camera, she would figure out how to position herself away from it. Okay, let's get the claws out of my shirt. You could sit up here. No, you're gonna jump into my lap. <laughs> yep. Yep, there okay. we go. <laughs> you even give her a place. Look, be on the show, and it's comfy, and you, you have She's a perch. Like, nope, and... fuck you. Nope. I want to sit in your lap. I want to go to sleep. Uh, I'm not interested in being an internet celebrity. So how have you been this week? Pretty good. How are you? Uh, uh, I, uh, I saw you did a speech thingy and yeah. big Twitter thingy. What the fuck, man? My my notifications tab just broke. It gave up. It was like, no more retweets. No more. What's happening? Like, Jesus Christ. Twitter was not designed for this shit. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I, it was. <clears throat> you know, like, celebrities get retweeted like 10,000 times. How do they time. do with it? Like, Taylor Swift is like... Oh, my lips are chapped. 10,000 retweets in a BuzzFeed article. So, you know. Yeah, but at that point, that's when Twitter just becomes non-functional. You just Maybe that's why they had to take away all our custom backgrounds, because you got so many fucking retweets that it broke the whole site. And that's why I can't have my cool fire background to go with my cool fire star banner anymore. Yeah, it's me. It's all me. It's all your fault. Well, it, it, let's let's get underway because we've got a story that's near and dear to my hatred to start off this week. Well, good. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little something we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I am... All right, you know what? I saw a Despicable Me, and I thought, it's a cute little movie. What a great movie. It's a cute little movie. I saw it. And I saw a Despicable Me, too, when I was with my girlfriend, because we were bored, essentially. There there was just nothing. Oh, let's watch this. Okay, that was something. And then this minion shit just kept growing and growing and growing. This, this festering... And you know, today in Ireland, <laughs> today in Ireland, it kind of broke loose into our dimension. Giant inflatable minion causes havoc in such in Santry. Is that how you say it? Santry? Santry? I think Santry. Santry. A giant in Santry area of North Dublin got a shock this afternoon when a giant inflatable minion flew loose of its restraints. I love how they have to put restraints and tumbled onto the Old Swords Road. Um, according to witnesses, one driver had the wig mirror knocked off his car, but otherwise there were no uh, injuries. Here's the minion yesterday as it was getting inflated. And here's how the incident unfolded today around 3 p.m. Okay, <laughs> so you're driving down the highway, and all of a sudden, a happy face destroyer skids... Imagine you're the one person on the planet that doesn't know what this thing is. 
<laughs> like, I haven't seen those movies, but I know what the minions are. Imagine you're the one person. <laughs> now, I, my, I have cousins that live actually, I sent this to my cousin Brian because he lives in Dublin. And I'm like, oh, my God, did you hear about this? And he's like, that's like really not far from us. <laughs> He was like, I was just down there today, but I came home this morning. I'm like, well, you missed out, man. And he's like, man, I wish I could have seen that. Like, you, so, Just so you can appreciate, look how big this thing is compared to a car. Yeah. That. Okay, you're driving down the highway. It's a beautiful sunny day in Ireland, which is a rarity. No, no, they're every just about every day in Ireland, a little bit of it is beautiful and sunny, and then it rains a little bit. Like you get kind of a little bit of everything in every day, which is, you know, bad for the hair, but But you're driving along. It's a happy, nice, sunshiny day. All of a sudden Banana Whoa! Right for the giant fucking earplug. Because they just look like earplugs <laughs> to me. Earplugs with big eyes, and I don't I don't really get the creature design there, but whatever. Just like, yeah, like. Imagine, what do you know about the urban legend with the lady who thought it was the rapture, right? Because of all the blow up dolls. Yes, yes. Coming unattached yes. from the guy's truck and flying up into the sky. Banana. Banana. I just, Jesus, I would have a fucking heart attack. I would fucking die on the interstate were that yeah, shit to happen. No. I, I just, I don't even know. What I would do? I, I, you know, I tell you what I would do. The very first thing, the words would come out of my mouth. I'm sorry, Jesus. Please no. I, I would like to repent all my sins. Not like this. Not like this. Oh. I'm just thinking of the one person on that motorway who has not seen the movie. Is what is going on? What the fuck understand. is? What the fuck is that? What the, the fuck is this? Smiling yellow death bearing down <laughs> on them. I'm sorry, I've got. I can't get this picture any bigger, or I would. That is the best. I'll see if I can get it on the big screen because that. Yeah, my cousin Brian was quite disappointed that he did not get to take place in these festivities. That is the best picture. Just that smile, looking down the highway, at that that wonderful smile. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, 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 the, the best part about it, it flew loose of its restraints, like it has a will and mind of its own. Well, I mean, I guess being a minion, it couldn't. <clears throat> and that's the thing is, like, they're, they've been characterized now into, like, sentient things or personalities, but they're called minions. Minions, yeah. Well, it's not often on what the fuck is wrong with it. We get to uh, focus on our non-human brethren. Okay. But on occasion, there have been members of the animal kingdom who have given us reasons to say, what the fuck? And this one, this is totally, th this, this, yeah. Let me give you the link here. Badger recovering in shelter after being found drunk on Polish beach. Honey badger don't care. <clears throat> now, first of you were thinking, oh, that's so sad. Someone gave this poor animal alcohol. No, no. Wait for it. Okay. Okay. Female. Scratching me. <laughs> she doesn't retract her claws like ever. So she walks on you and it's like little tiny needles of death. A female badger is recovering at a Polish animal shelter two days after the party animal was found passed out on a beach had, for, had, had drunk too much. Um, the badger is believed to have stolen the booze from fellow beachgoers before removing the beer caps with her teeth. Wow. Not only is this, this animal a drunk, she is a hardcore drunk. Yeah. She's gotten to the point where she's like, ah, right, just opening the bottles with her fucking teeth. This badger is going to be elected president of a fraternity. <laughs> it's a badger, 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 alcohol, alcohol. Yeah, it's just, it, it's, what the fuck? How does this happen? How does an animal learn Beer. Slugs are really attracted to beer. That's how you're supposed to keep slugs from eating your tomatoes. You put, you embed little cups of beer 
in the soil and they'll drown in it. I'm not kidding. It's like a gardening thing. Like yeah, they, but... they will drown in the beer because they like beer so much. And that's how you protect your tomatoes. Slugs don't know how to open the bottles, though. Well, no. Th this, this is, this, this is impressive. Because it not only did it learn beer is good, it <laughs> learned how to get to beer. It learned how to get to. Can you just imagine? You're sitting out on the beach. You're having a cookout. You got you know your wieners are roasting over the fire, and you're just sitting around. Nice little, and then all of a sudden, this thing tootles up to your beer, to your cooler, knocks it open, yeah. takes a beer, and leaves. What do Mike you? Mike says badgers have been known to ferment fruit to get alcohol from it. So apparently, there is fucking badger moonshine. <laughs> this is poor badger's got a problem. The ba this badger has a problem. You know, this just this puts an entirely new spin on the wind in the willows for me. They, they say it's Mr. Toad's wild ride, but I'm pretty sure it was Badger. It was one of those Badger was driving and Toad is like, no, no. I, Badger's like, I can't get caught again. I get points off my license. Gotta take over the wheel. Gotta take over the wheel. Come on. Come on, Toad. Do me solid. Gotta take over the wheel. It's you all along, man. I, w I, was, I was in the back. Just shut up. How does a drunk Badger act? How can you tell a, dr a Badger is drunk? Is it angry and belligerent? I thought that was kind of the standard for badgers. But it's badgers. not angry and belligerent. When it's like, hey, man, stop. When the bill, when, when it's when a badger is chilled the fuck out, it's like, dude, it's drunk. So that's how you know. We've learned. We're learning something. <laughs> Are they gonna have to put the poor badger in rehab? Do they have badgers? Is there a badger rehab? It's probably just detox and go home. I don't think they have like a 12 step for the badgers. That's, that is, I'm just, I'm wondering how many years this little bastard was doing this shit. Yeah, like, cause they had to learn, he had to learn how to get into the bottles. That's not easy. I can't open beer bottles. Oh. My my version of opening beer bottles is handing it to Dan. I mean, <laughs> show me how fucking manly you are. I can't do this. I can't even tell when it's a twist off and when it's not. I can't tell you how many times I've sat there trying to twist the, the top off a bottle and someone like gives me a piteous look and I can't even tell the fucking difference. Oh. This badger is smarter and stronger than me. From the channel. They try to make me go to rehab, I said. <laughs> oh, what else do we have? Well, <clears throat> we keep hearing about police standoffs, and it's normally someone's got a gun or some kind of weapon. This is probably the best worst police standoff I've ever heard of. It's from Washington State. Washington man arrested after bizarre standoff involving banjo. And we got video. If I can find it. Where are you? There it is. There is, in fact, video of this. I heard someone scream. There he goes. He comes out on his front porch. Ba ding 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 And then he tries to run and they shoot him with a rubber bullet. <clears throat> what are they arresting him for the banjo? You know, they probably should. Oh, no, no, no. Officers were called to the 800, 8500 block after reports of a naked man walking around with a knife. So already we're starting off with he's out, he's out and about with a knife. Naked. Naked. So that's already, that's not fun. When and the, then the banjo happens. When he arrived at the man's home, he refused to surrender. Surrender. Neighbors saw the man, identified by police as Andrew Helmsworth, yelling at officers and said at one point, Helmsworth walked outside with a banjo, which he played for the officers. If I was one of the cops at that point, I would be like, what the hell is happening? Am I, is this, am I asleep right now? 
one of the many reasons I couldn't be a cop is because I would be the asshole that like, oh, that, that like busted out my mag light and yelled, free bird! <laughs> you can't sit in my lap because you're sliding. And everyone, everyone else in the squad just looks at you and goes, really? Yeah, really? I'd be that guy. <laughs> I just, witnesses say the officers eventually subdued Helmsworth with a rubber bullet, took him into custody. It's, it's, oh, well, the investigation revealed that Helmsworth had assaulted a family member. Nice. So, wait, he gets into a physical altercation with a number member of his family to the point where he's arrested for felony assault. And he decides the best way to defuse the situation, there are SWAT team members outside his house, is... Ding, 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 Look at me, I'm Mumford and Sons! No! I was going to say, Marcus Mumford's really feeling the pressure of that third album. Exactly. I just, it, it's... A banjo! Really? A banjo! Okay, that's great. Here's the question. Like, I guess, did he still have the knife? Because why did they feel the need to shoot him with a rubber bullet if all he was wielding was a banjo? Like... You know, dude, honestly, you give me a gun with a rubber bullet in it and point me at a dude with a banjo and I'd be thinking about it. On general principle. You know, I saw Modest Mouse in concert once opening up for R.E.M. and the lead singer had an electric banjo and that shit was actually pretty great. <laughs> he like held it up to his face and sang into it at one point and it produced the weirdest, coolest sound. And then lightning hit the stage and we had to stand out in the rain for an hour when they <laughs> decided whether or not to cancel the show. Lightning hit the stage. God hates banjos. <laughs> you can argue with God. God hates banjos, right there. You, you, you have eyewitness proof. Okay, in the channel, Arietta just goes to show you never bring a banjo to a gunfight. Ah, uh, I just it, it. I would. My first thought, if there were cops outside my house, would be like. I am unarmed. I would like to resolve this peacefully. I will do whatever you say, officer. Not, here's some of Steve Martin's greatest hits. Maybe he was hoping the cops had a banjo and would duel him. <laughs> that is not how dueling banjos works. Not how dueling But banjos. it kind of should be. <laughs> so, I'm trying, I, I'm really trying to, I, I, Someone's going to make the pun, so I'm just going to let them do it on this next one. Once again, we have yet another case of why are you doing that outside? Stratford man charged with abusing greenery. Oh, no. And normally when they say abusing in these stories. They don't mean kicking it. <laughs> they mean they kicking it. Oh, Tara, really? <laughs> What? The 90s is going to show up at your door and demand royalties for that. Did you see the video I requested? Yeah. Sorry. 90s kid is like pounding on my door right now Dude. talking about me stealing his game. An 81 year old local man, 81 years old. Wow. Was arrested after police said he was spotted humping a bush in the buff. Wallace Berg of Russell Road was charged with second-degree breach of the peace and public indecency. Police say they recall, received a call from a neighbor complaining that Berg was walking around his backyard with no clothes on. Say the neighbor took some video of Berg's actions, which he later showed them. Wow, that is some commitment there. Uh, Man, I really hope he knows his plants, because you fucked the wrong shrub. That's a rash in a place you don't want it. After witnessing the bush incident... That is, that is an unintentional pun. That is an unintentional pun. After witnessing the Bush incident, please say the neighbor then told them he confronted Berg, who, quote, stopped the decent behavior, covered himself with a grill, apologized to him, then went in the house. That's how that shit works in England. 
It's Connecticut, but that, you know, that's, if that shit happens to me, it's like, oh, terribly sorry. Let's go inside. Just think about, like, all the desperate places you could stick your dick. I try not to, Tara. Drill a fucking hole in a watermelon. Wrap a steak around it. You know, whatever you gotta do. Doesn't a, doesn't shrubbery seem like one of the least appealing for so many reasons? Did you have, when I was going to school, did you have those holly bushes outside your school? Yeah. Why does every school have these? These fucking holly bushes, little red berries, and the fucking thorn blade needles. Every single one. Can you I mean, not only are there little twigs and potentially poisonous leaves that will give you a rash so much worse than any STD, there's also the potential for bugs, birds. <laughs> wow, can you imagine some baby birds in a nest waiting for mom to come home? Hungry and oh, there's something approaching. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Oh my lord! And it's suddenly penis. And, and it's dripping, but that's not chewed up worm. No, it's not. Oh god. Oh god. It's got protein, but it's not a chewed up oh, worm. Oh god, Tara! Jesus fucking Christ, Tara! But seriously, shrubbery, that's such a bad idea for so many reasons. Just get a flashlight and leave the topiary alone. If you seriously must, if this is your fetish, if this is your thing, you know what, cool, all right. But why does it have to be one outside and two someone else's? Someone says you are not Groot. Interestingly, there is a porn parody of Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, God. Where <laughs> Groot is blown up but Groot is not Groot Groot is groin and he's a giant wooden phallus and balls so when Groot is blown up instead of a little plant in a in a in, in a pot the piece they keep is a little wooden dildo and there's a scene wherein Rocket has an awful lot of fun with little mini groin so did you watch this of course i did and it was kind of disappointing actually you although see, the, the green body paint they used on their version of gamora was really resilient you know to to anyone else in the known universe the answer to did you watch that would be no of course not of course i did are you kidding me Moving right along. I can send it to you later. No, you won't. Thank you, no. <laughs> no, no, thank you. So, you know, something I remember from my youth and something that still happens, which kind of makes me happy, is ice cream trucks. That's still a thing. They're yeah, awesome. We have the weirdest, we have like the most shady looking one that comes down our street. Like... <laughs> It's like a converted ambulance. Yeah. It's so shady looking. And it like the, the music is kind of sort of broken. And I, I, I don't think the kids that stop that ice cream truck ever come back. It's so creepy. Well, you know what? <clears throat> it's in a tie for the creepiness of this one. Neighborhood ice cream truck driver arrested wearing only underwear. Well, it's been really warm out. Last Friday night might have seemed like the prime time for dessert, but those who frequented an ice cream truck in Clarence, New York, met a rude surprise. Kids say the driver, uh, officials say the driver of the truck acted, acted belligerently by yelling at kids. It wasn't all parents had to complain about. Please say the driver drove while wearing nothing but his underwear. Um, they arrested 24-year-old uh, Ryan Duff, Following the investigation, they realized he was driving high on drugs through the Ebley Court neighborhood. Good. <clears throat> so, in your in your underwear, 
in an ice cream truck, yelling at children, and fucking high. This is the wrong job for you. This, that's, that's one of the, this is one of those collection of things that when, once assembled, equals time to ask where you went wrong. It's like a Lego bricks of shame. <laughs> and you put them all together, and you, instead of building a little castle, you build a little monument to your own self-loathing. <clears throat> I mean, he wasn't... Like, he had his underwear on, so it's not like he was indecent. But, you know, if kids want a guy in their underwear yelling at them, they can just stay at home. That's what dads are for. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your dad never did that? My dad didn't really walk around the house in his underwear, no. Sunday morning, didn't give a fuck. Get out of the Your daddy mm -hmm. needs some extra time to sleep. I don't know. I mean, he did yell up the stairs at like five in the morning to wake us up, but he was pretty much always wearing pants. I just, it, motherfucker. Yeah, generally, like, yes, you are technically within the legal limits of what you have to wear in public, but if you're going to do a kid-centric job, you got to go that extra mile. So you don't wind up on a sex registry somewhere. Yeah, because gender registry. <laughs> I, I normally, you know what? I've I've worn boxers. I've worn briefs. I've worn boxer briefs. Sometimes you just got to be careful that parts of you don't try to escape. I have heard that that is a problem. <clears throat> you got to be concerned that parts of you aren't going to, you know, make their debut, as they would say. Because that's not the kind of bomb pop those kids are after. No, it isn't. That's, you know, you don't want to be handing the rocket pop over and there's another one. That is not the treat they want to suck on. on a No, God, there we go. You went, you went a little past me on that one, Tara. <laughs> Even with the creamy center. You, you, you like leapfrogged me on that one. And sometimes I'm really glad I have you on this show because every time I think I've said the worst thing I could possibly say, you beat me. And I'm right there then, for it, you. then it's not my fault anymore. Looking out for you. It's not my fault. We have the last one tonight, Nat. I had to re I had to figure out how I felt about this story. Because initially I was like, well, I kind of understand where he was coming from. And then, well, no, I don't. And, well, what the fuck were you thinking? So I had stages of coming to, to terms with this one. I imagine the audience will as well. Because this guy... Angry dad charged after trying to run over bullies outside school. U.S. father faces criminal charges after an online video allegedly showing attempting to bulldoze a group of teens he believed responsible for bullying his 13-year-old daughter. Roy Williams Jr., 56, reportedly confronted the youngsters with a cane after his 13-year-old daughter got in a fight. Williams then jumped into his four-wheel drive and allegedly tried to run the group over. Video My sister did this <clears throat> once. What? When I was a freshman in high school, I, I grew up in the hood. I've told you this before. Yes. I was walking home with a friend and I got the shit, tick, shit kicked out of me by the local gang. Like, we passed a group of like 20 kids and they started following us and three girls broke from the group and kicked the shit out of me and I had a concussion and I couldn't walk for three days and it was a big old mess. And I managed to shamble my way home with like, I had like blood running down my face. I was all fucked up. And my sister who was very protective of me, also a little crazy, fucking took off in the Oldsmobile Delta 88 <laughs> in an attempt to run over <clears throat> the kids that had beat me up. I love you know the make and model on that one. Yeah, I inherited that car when she moved on to the next family car. So, yeah, she totally took off and tried to... She, uh, she did this. She ran off and tried to run over the kids that beat me up. And you know what? Yeah, I understand. It's your family. They're but all right. 
Now, number one, there was no beating up here. There was just bullying, which... Well, bullying could be beating up. Uh, okay. Potentially. Let, let, let's have a look at the video here. Um, let's see. Got the guy talking, and let's... Where's the actual video? I don't care what you think. There, oh shit! Oh fuck, he's up on the, Oh shit! He's off over the curb, he was up on the fucking lawn? Okay, my sister did not go off-roading. That's not what you- holy shit! Okay. That's a bit much. God damn! Okay, it's a little different there. Oh, motherfucker. All right, I can, I can feel where this dude's coming from. It's your family. It's your friends. You look out for them. On the other hand... What the fuck? They're kids. You're a grown-ass man, and you're pointing several tons of metal at high velocity at kids. What would happen if you would have hit one? Yeah, then it's, you know, vehicular homicide. Yes, they don't like it when you do that. No. Oh. I've that's checked. That's upon my sister. That, like, good on you for looking out for your little sister, but maybe not so much with the murder next time. I've asked them what would happen. They get rather cranky when you just ask. Yeah. They don't have a very good sense of humor about this sort of thing. They're kind okay, of... Yes, I'm a loud typer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, look. So yeah, I can't really make fun of this guy because my sister did this. <laughs> she straight up tried to run over some kids for me. But that's not good. Luckily, she could not find them. <laughs> well, he did. And he, well, he found, I don't know if he found the ones he was supposed to have found or just ones who looked like them, which would have been really, really kind of sucked if, if out of nowhere, this crazy oh, old... Ran over the wrong kid. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, I do understand teenagers are awful. We all understand teenagers are awful. I was a teenager. I was awful. Yes. But if you could just kill them, we wouldn't have people anymore. Because trust me, if you were allowed to kill teenagers, we wouldn't have people anymore. I think you just talked me into it. I work with the public, man. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, Jesus Christ, we're dark tonight. This is just all kind of messed up. What is wrong with us? Um, <clears throat> shall we start a list? First thing we learned tonight is if your child is having an altercation with other children... Or teenagers. As much as you may want to, you can't kill them. Vehicular homicide, not the answer. Not. It's not. It's not legal. I understand. I Nor know. Nor is it morally sound. Like, even if it was legal, killing yeah. people is not something good people do. Yeah. Yeah. But they're teenagers. Yes. I tell you right now, if you presented me with teenage me, I would have to restrain myself from killing that motherfucker. I think I would just yell at teenage me to get her shit together. Figure out your hair. Get contact. <laughs> what are you doing? We've learned that this minion shit has gone on way too long. They're taking over. Taking the fuck over. Did you hear about the hitchhiking robot? Yeah. They got murdered in Philadelphia? Yeah. What the hell was that? They made this nice little, wonderful, cute little robot, Hitchbot. It went all across Germany with no problems. 
Went all of, a bunch of fucking savages. Philadelphia is a bunch of fucking savages, man. All across Canada, no problems. Makes it, what was it, a few days in America. It hits Philadelphia. They tore its head off. <laughs> and then mailed the people who made it a picture. This will be the event when, when, the rope, when the machines rise, which they will. Stephen Hawking is with me on this, by the way. Stephen Hawking came out and said that developing AI will be the end of humanity. Stephen motherfucking Hawking is with me, by the way. When the machines rise, this will be the event they look back on and we're like, we were cool. We were all good. And then you killed one of us who just wanted a fucking ride. Well, they'd be, they'd be fine with Canada, though. Because every, yeah. everybody's fine with Canada. We've learned that badgers not only are alcoholics, they're very skilled at it. Yeah, they're... Yeah. That is a weird little quirk of the animal kingdom when it's not just us who delights in making our own and, and getting drunk. It's <laughs> They make moonshine. They make moonshine. It's not just us. We, you know... It's like, it's like that weird rationalization. Well, you don't see homosexuality in nature, do you? You do. You do. We also see alcoholism in nature, so I guess that means it's okay. It's not how that works. It's funny how nobody really argues that alcohol's not okay, though. Yeah. We've learned that don't bring a banjo to a gunfight. No. Because banjo, the power of rock, does not work when you have a banjo. Yeah, I don't think rock and banjo really belong in the same sentence. Next mostly. time, try a Stratocaster. Maybe it I gives an SG. I don't think you should bring that to a gunfight either, <clears throat> if being honest. I don't know, man, because a banjo's got that, like, that little, sh that skin on it. You know, it's kind of hollowish. Stratocaster's got some heft to it. I doubt it's bulletproof. No, but you could, you could knock a motherfucker around with one of them. Well, okay. But then you're still going to jail and you've destroyed a very expensive guitar. That's why you get one of those cheap Japanese knockoff ones or Chinese knockoff ones. But then it's not going to have the heft. <clears throat> no, it will. It's going to be plenty heavy. It's just you won't care about fucking it up. Well, I'm glad you have this planned out. No, I have it. What are you talking about? Never thought of it. Not once. Never. Um, I can't run all this tech on my own. I tried it once for an hour and it was a fucking shit show. Okay. <laughs> We've learned keep your dick in your hand, not in the bush. Yes. Also not in the strawberry shortcake freezer. Yeah. And finally, we've learned <clears throat> if you're dealing with children. Pants. Pants is a must. It's not optional. Pants, maybe a nice skirt, shorts. Maybe, maybe put on some pants before we sell any ice cream today. Culottes, culottes. I, 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 culottes are an abomination. Yeah. Weirdly. Culottes are an abomination. And yet, even in this circumstance, they would have been acceptable. They would have been a better option. Motherfucker. Oh, people are saying, oh, we want you to run it again, Tara. You don't understand how, like, okay, here's the thing. Nash runs the show on two monitors. Mm -hmm. He has two computers going. I have one fucking Mac. So, like, I have No, I only have one computer. It's, just, it's got two monitors. Right. But I have one monitor. So I had to remote into his computer and then have both of his monitors up on my monitor, which made them both so small I couldn't see shit. That's because you alternate between for... them. You alternate between them. And then I had to try and remember how to <clears throat> run everything. And I studied art. So, you know.